after we'd done uh, two two kind of platform games, uh, kind of we were, we were kind of looking for the next opportunities. One part of the team went on to build DKC3, and the other one went on to create a new IP called Project Dream, which at the time was on the Super NES. We were all massive fans of Zelda, so we thought, let's 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 do our take on an adventure game. When I joined Dream, we just started to move it to N64. It had previously been started on SNES, but we were looking to move it onto this new machine. We had a, a character on the screen. It kind of it looked very nice, but this this was like really at the end of the um, Super NES's life. We had Edson, which was the hero of the game, and we had Dinger, which was his kind of pet dog that he finds, and he'd say, "A oh, dog." I can see a dog down there. I'd better go and see if he's all right. You'd go down, you'd get the dog, and then you'd be chased by trolls. And we worked on that for quite a number of months. This kind of boy who kind of grew up in a village and he went, went out into the big wide world uh, where he gets embroiled in this kind of fantastic adventure. Um, and the main bad guys were a bunch of pirates led by uh, Captain Black Eye. The view you had was kind of a bit like a game called Pandemonium or Nights into Dreams. I think the scope of the thing was so large, we were almost, we, were almost we, we, could, we couldn't see any end in sight. And Greg and Tim had been talking and they decided to change the whole styling of the game and it became uh, something akin to Super Mario 64. We'd changed the main character from the boy um, who we felt was a bit weak and we, we felt we wanted something a bit more something a bit more character, so we investigated firstly a rabbit, uh, and then secondly a bear. Get rid of this, this, this guy, let's get a, 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 an animal in there. Bear, we're having a bear, that was it. It went from being Dream to being Kazoo, but it, again it was, it was jumping on things and um, you know, lots of kind of baddies and different things you could be doing. And it's all going to be instruments, banjo, piccolo, blues, all of those. Like, yes, yes, I'll just do it right now. So we had kind of banjo in this kind of big sprawling adventure game that we weren't quite sure how we were ever going to finish. So we decided to can dream at that point um, and focus on something we, we felt a lot more confident we could we could kind of build. And I remember talking with Chris Stamper in the canteen once and he asked me what I thought of banjo. And I still think I was a little bit annoyed that the rabbit had been dumped. We took banjo. Um, from Project Dream and, and kind of put him in his own gamer. We wanted him to be a platformer. Should have been a rabbit. It would have been Bunny Kazooie or something. The roaming world of Banjo, we encountered a whole new set of problems because we were working in 3D now and we had things like a, a camera that we had to keep control of and work out where it was going to go and what's going to happen when the player goes behind a wall. So we started developing like a, a move set for Banjo um, and I wanted to give him a double jump having kind of seen, seen Mario's double jump but I wanted it to be more flexible so the player could double jump anywhere they like. We were up against Mario, I wanted to try and beat Mario and that was our thing, you know, try to do that. Now what would explain away the fact that this this fat bear can jump in midair? Um, so I think we pondered a few ideas and when we're getting desperate when and usually when you get desperate all the crazy ideas come out and and, and one idea we had was um, some a pair of wings could appear out of this backpack all these sort of things that we just encounter as we started developing and we kind of just tackled them as we as we encountered them so these this pair of wings kind of came out of the backpack and and flapped it and it explained it away and it fitted perfectly we started testing out proper sort of 3d levels and and we got you know the character jumping around and swimming and things and it then went from kazoo um, to banjo kazoo well let's have a pair of legs that appear out the backpack to kind of assist banjo so it's not him running it's the uh, these legs so we then added ei on the end or ie rather and um and it became banjo kazooie and then we just made that these wings and these legs could be could belong to uh, another character, and this character lives in Banjo's backpack and comes out at um, occasions to help him along. So that was where Kazuo was born. It was probably the breakthrough moment, and and then all the dialogue, the interjection between them, and, and Kazuo being sarcastic and uh, adventurous, and Banjo being like kind of a bit uh, dim-witted and slow. All of that was kind of came afterwards, and it was all literally just built on this wanting a double jump. We needed like a shaman character, um, and then it was really just down, you know, we were just left to do, you know, get on with it. Um, so Mumbo quickly took shape with his skull and his feathers and his furry pants, and um, in those days, you could literally draw the character, get someone to approve it, model it, 
animate it and have it in the game. It was, you know, two or three days. So Banjo and Kazooie never speak, but initially they did. I think one of the reasons we made them have that strange garble noise. We realised we were going to have to record so much uh, speech, it was going to increase development time considerably. I did the voice of Mumbo, of course, and uh, Ikumbokum. The voices for all the characters were just kind of different. A lot of them were Grant, but a lot of them were different people just kind of mumbling sort of different little phrases. The Ikumbokum, I just played with it and just, it sounded good. So Ikumbokum is made up of come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. So like I kind of went, I went, God, what, I, I bought it, it got R E up like that, and I, I recorded myself doing that, and then I cut it up into pieces. When we'd been working on Dream, I'd been doing some of the voices for the boy, and then when he changed to the bear, um, Tim was looking for a noise, there are noises that he would make and words that he would say. So I did some of the voices for Banjo then, and then it transformed into the gargled noise at the end. So the Kazooie needed a special noise as well, and it needed to be separate from Banjo, it needed to be uh, noticeably different. So we made her a much sharper uh, noise because she was a Brie girl. So that was why she was Brie! Stop and Swap, that came about because we discovered by accident that if you pull out the cartridge on the N64, put in another cartridge, the contents of the memory, the RAM, are still there. So we realised that we could use this to make a transfer of some information from one game into another. The idea was to have, to either reward players for playing rare games, so it's like the more you play the more you get rewarded, or um, to, to actually swap items between games, and that's where the stop and swap came from. I can see you have to like, quickly grab the cartridge, grab it, and then put the other one in. Um, and I think uh, we were uh, concerned that people were going to do damage to their cartridges. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't tell Nintendo, because we didn't think they'd really need to know until towards the end. And then, of course, when we did tell them, they said, that's not really going to work, and it's not guaranteed to work in all cases for the N64. So as a result, we had to drop the feature, but the remnants of that still exist in both games. The game, I think, was well received. Again, another massive thing for me was to see Banjo at the top of the all formats charts in, in the UK. Yeah, so I think, I think players uh, appreciated the, 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 the humour and the charm and the, and the characters uh, we managed to put into the world. When I see my son play Banjo Kazooie, it's just, it's really heartwarming because it just, it just feels right, right? It felt like almost every character you came across had a story to tell. Most of them were sob stories that you had to help out, so it's almost like um, Banjo was like a, a agony aunt going around fixing all these problems, so. Like running around in Banjo was fun without doing anything. It was just fun to run around, you know. I think they were, I think they, I think they loved it, didn't they? What are you saying? <laughs> It had that, all that magic about it, you could feel it. It was in the walls. I think it was just the, the, the whole immersive nature of the world, the fantastic music, the, the kind of, just the, the charm of it was kind of what elevated it from maybe just another, just another 3D platform into something that, that kind of people remember. <laughs>